Good evening. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of the Lord's dying and rising that leads to the victory of Easter. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city of our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. And so let us pray over these holy palms. O Lord, increase the faith of those who place their hope in you, and graciously hear the prayers of those who call on you, that we, who today hold high these branches to hail Christ in his triumph, may bear fruit for you by good works accomplished in him. We bless them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus and the disciples drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find an ass tethered and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them here to me, and if anyone should say anything to you, reply. The master has need of them, then he will send them at once. This happened so that what had been spoken to the prophet might be fulfilled. Say to daughter Zion, behold, your king comes to you meek and riding on an ass, and on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had ordered them. They brought the ass and the colt and laid their cloaks over them, and he sat upon them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and strewed them on the road. The crowds preceding him and those following kept crying out and saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken and asked, Who is this? And the crowds replied, This is Jesus the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us then praise our King Christ and join in raising our voices as we enter our prayer. Please join in singing number 498, All Glory, Love, and Honor, number 498. of children. 
Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering, and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue, that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm can be found at number 33. Number 33. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Oh, Lord, do not desert me, but hate. 
and proclaim you in their midst. Oh, fear the Lord, my people, give glory to God's name. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. and honor to you, O Lord, O Lord. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise and honor to you, O Lord, O Lord. Praise and Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every other name. Praise and honor to you, O Lord, O Lord. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. One of the twelve who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver. And from that time on, he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him. The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Amen. I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, 
said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and giving it to his disciples, said, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins, I tell you. From now on, I shall not drink this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it with you new in the kingdom of my Father. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, This night, all of you will have your faith shaken in, will have your faith in me shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said in reply, Though all may have their faith in you shaken, mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen. I say to you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, My soul is, mournful, is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you could not keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again. My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold. The hour is at hand when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up. Let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged a sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand to his sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its sheath. For all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my Father and he, and he will not provide me at this moment with more than twelve legions of angels? But then, how would the scriptures be fulfilled which say that it must come to pass in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I sat teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass, that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the high priest's courtyard, and going inside he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death. 
but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward who stated, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us under oath before the living God whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so, but I tell you from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? You have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, He deserves to die. Then they spat at his face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, Prophesy for us, Christ. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over and sit to him and said, You too were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarean. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely you two, you two are one of them. Even your speech gives you away. At that, he began to curse and swear. I do not know the man. And immediately, a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, what is that to us? Look to it yourself. Flinging the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priests gathered up the money but said, It is not lawful to deposit this in the temple treasury, for it is the price of blood. After consultation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why that field, even today, is called the field of blood. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet. And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, Pontius Pilate, and he questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word. So the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at the time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message, Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor then said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? They all said, 
Let him be crucified. But he said, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder. Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them, but after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to the place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink, mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they said, sat down and kept watch over him there. And they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself, if you are the Son of God, and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. So he is the king of Israel? Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, This one is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice, and gave up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men with him who were keeping watch over Jesus feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening. And they said, Truly, this was the Son of God. There were many women there looking on from a distance who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of James, and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, 
Jesus wrapped it in clean linen and laid it in his new tomb that he had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there, facing the tomb. The next day, one of the, following, the, fo the one following the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that this impostor, while still alive, said, After three days I will be raised up. Give orders, then, that the grave be secured until the third day, lest his disciples come and steal him and say to the people, He has been raised from the dead. This last impostor would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, The guard is yours. Go secure it as best you can. So they went and secured the tomb by fixing a seal to the stone and setting the guard. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. How quickly life can change. We began with a celebratory celebration of pride, joy, and enthusiasm of Jesus is the one. And we ended with him being betrayed, very ordinary things in our lives, betrayed, abandoned, humiliated, tortured by ambassadors or those who represented the state at the time in a capital punishment with just a few remaining people. And we hear a Jesus who very humanly in the midst of all that suffering and fear and abandonment cried out, where are you, God? I trust you, but where are you? We know what those feelings are like. We heard the story of someone who regretted what he had done and did not trust there was any future out of his past. And we met someone who trusted that this Jesus' forgiveness and mercy was so great that the terrible deed of denying the one who he loved, he could have a future. And at times you and I get stuck thinking there is no future for us because of what we have done. Today the story reminds us again and again that we who claim Jesus to be our king, to be the one, as, the, as we were told in the procession of palm branches, people sang out, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. That would be us. So when you and I leave here and come in the name of the Lord into our world, we understand there will be violence, there will be hatred, there will be suffering. And there will be kindness and mercy and forgiveness. There will be those who, like Jesus, told people to put away their swords. He came into Jerusalem on a donkey, an animal of humility and peacemaking, not on a big, big chariot of war. We who come in the name of the Lord are to resist at all costs the violence that fuels our world, that creates divisions and hatred among us. That's what Jesus would teach us to do. Perhaps, anybody here watch TV? Just wanted to see if you're with me, okay. There are times when you're seeing people playing a card game around the table. The game goes on and on and on, and all of a sudden somebody pushes everything into the middle of the table. It could be money, but it could be a deed to a home or a property. They go all in. They're beautiful watch or beautiful jewelry, but all in. That's my image of what the story of Jesus is about. He's all in, not for himself, but he's all in for you and for me. And we know he is all in, especially for those who are victims like he was. He's all in for those who are pushed to the sides of the world and sides of life. He's all in for those who are written off as being unworthy. 
forgiving a sinner that no one thought possible, healing those who thought unhealable, and reaching out to the untouchable, the lepers of his day. So, blessed are those who walk in the name of the Lord. That's who we are. And we have a choice. We can follow this one who we call king, who was all in for us, and in the overwhelming anguish of his betrayal and humiliation and brutal beatings that he experienced, and knowing that he breathed his last, unclear of what was going to happen next. And at times you and I, when we have breathed our last, if you will, thinking there's no way I'm getting up from this, like Jesus, we wait confidently that our God never forgets, that our God is all in with us. As our faith leads us to the waters of baptism, let us again renew that faith which unites us with the Lord. And so I ask, do you reject Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This, then, is our faith in which we have been baptized. It is the faith of the Church. We are proudly profess to follow Christ now and forever. And again, let us gather our needs and those of our brothers and sisters and bring them to the Lord. For Pope Francis, recovering from a respiratory illness, let us pray to the Lord that world leaders may open their ears and listen to the voices that cry out for food, for dignity, and for peace. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of us, that participation in the liturgies of Holy Work Week may strengthen us in our commitment to carry our crosses and assist others with theirs, let us pray to the Lord. For our students preparing for First Communion and Confirmation, that their thirst for faith, knowledge, and meaning may guide them on their Christian mission, let us pray to the Lord. For the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to call people to respond to service on our pastoral council, let us pray to the Lord. For Jim Wester and all our beloved dead, may they enter into eternal life with the angels and saints, let us pray to the Lord. For those intentions written on the prayer cards placed in the baskets and for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. God, we ask that you would hear these in all of our prayers in the name of your Son, who is our brother and Savior now and forever. As our gifts are gathered and the altar is prepared, please join in singing number 512. Will sacred heads surround it? Number 512. Say 
Pray that my sacrifice and yours become an acceptable offering to our Lord our God. O Lord, through the passion of your only begotten Son, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may already feel the effects of your tender mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. and just. It is truly right and just, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through your Son, Jesus. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners, and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with angels and saints, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Terra, gloria tua, O sana in excelsis, benedictus, qui venit in nomine domini, O sana in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord fount of all holiness, make holy our gifts by sending down your spirit upon them so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks and praise, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. Similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. As we celebrate once again the memorial of your son's dying and rising, we offer you, God, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence this night to be your humble servants. We pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jerome, Jeff, and Jim, our bishops, our clergy, and all those who serve your people. Remember also our brothers and our sisters who have fallen asleep and the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them all into the light of your face. And as always, have mercy on us all. That with the Blessed Virgin Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us then pray as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, thy kingdom come. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, you said to your apostles, peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you, Thank you to share a sign of that peace. Agnus Dei, qui tolles peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolles peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolles peccata mundi, Dona nobis pace. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called again to the supper of the Lamb. As we come forward to receive our Lord truly present in the Holy Eucharist, please join in singing number 941, Eat This Bread, number 941.
Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you, through Christ our Lord. Mass of Christian burial for Geraldette Teddy Didier will be held at St. John the 23rd Immaculate Conception Church site on Wednesday, April 5th at 6.30 p.m. with visitation starting at 4.30 p.m. Please keep the Didier family in your prayers. St. John the 23rd School will be holding its annual flower sale. Pre-order sales are going on now. This is your chance to secure your specific flower selections. Order forms and payments are due by April 14. There are members in the back of church with order forms or visit the school website for more information. Don't forget, you can donate to the Beautify the Trail service project as well. Your help is needed today. Did you see all the Easter plants when you walked in today? Those plants need to be delivered to the 135 homebound members of our parish. Before leaving today, please pick up some plants along with the parishioner's name. Deliver the plants within the next two weeks. Just a reminder that masks are still required when visiting a nursing home. Our homebound truly look forward to your visits. Thank you for your help. Let us pray. O oh Lord, look on this, your family, for whom our Lord Jesus did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agonies of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. God bless you, Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Go, follow the Lord. As we go forth, Christ inspired to joyfully live our call, please join in singing number 487. Again, we keep the solemn feast, number 487.